The monks of the Shaolin Temple train intensely for decades to perfect their craft. As a result, Shaolin monks routinely perform superhuman feats of endurance, mental strength, and defy physics. Trust me, you don't want to mess with them, because these guys are some of the most devoted people in the entire world. In fact, most of them start training when they were kids, some as early as four years old. That's right, while you were busy climbing on the jungle gym in the playground, these kids were doing things you could only dream of. And there's no rest for them either. When the clock strikes 5.30 a.m., it's go time. Early morning runs are pretty much a given when you decide to dedicate your entire life to martial arts. And of course, you can't have kung fu without weapon training. These kids become experts long before even finishing grade school. Oh. And in order to do that, they have to wrap themselves around a tree better than your mom's Christmas lights during the holidays. And if that wasn't hard enough, they decide to practice their balance by doing the world's hardest handstand. But all of this is just the beginning. In order to become a true Shaolin master, every single part of your body needs to be trained to inhuman levels. Even the most delicate parts, like your neck. And to do that, these monks put their necks through drills that none of us could even imagine mustering up the courage to endure. This dude suspends himself mid-air, only using his neck in a technique called turtle breathing. And I still have no idea how he managed to keep us cool while doing so. And this guy pulled a car using only his ear. I guess that's one way to back out of the driveway. Their minds are some of the deadliest weapons, and in order to keep that safe, they need to strengthen that too. And it starts with an exercise where they have to support their entire body weight with only their head. And it must work because after doing this exercise, their heads become practically indestructible. Bricks, iron rods, you name it. And their heads can break it. But let's get back to the basics. The hands are one of the most important body parts to a practitioner, which is why they spend an egregious amount of time doing iron palm training. I mean, the goal is simple, turning their hands into literal weapons. With techniques that they've perfected throughout history, they can condition their hands to be able to deliver powerful blows without a single scratch. These grueling exercises involve driving their hands through all kinds of elements, rock, sand, water, and it's all done with the intention of bringing their palms to superhuman-like strength. Once they've done enough training, they can do the unthinkable. Break bricks with the back of their hands with ease. Yeah, I'd be careful high-fiving any of these guys. They might send you to the hospital. You'd think monks would be fine with just training their hands, but no, they need to train their fingers too. And they don't stop until their bones are literally unbreakable. And I really mean that. <laughs> These exercises start with practitioners jabbing their fingers into sand, which is tough, but that's just the beginning. Because the next stage is only for those whose pain tolerance is set to the highest level. It's called the diamond finger. And it begins by bringing out a 150 pound machine that rolls your finger the same way Pizza Hut rolls out its dough. Other training involves punching trees with your fingers, and if I tried that, I might as well book an Uber to the emergency room ahead of time because that's where I'm heading right afterwards. A standard push-up is too easy for them. Their fingers are so strong that they only need two of them to hold their entire body weight. Yeah, good luck winning a push-up contest against these guys. You know what? I don't think you'd be able to win a contest of any kind against them, especially when things like iron shirt training exists. Wow, there's only four spears, dude. That looks really painful. Yeah, wow. I mean, their training basically turns them into men of steel and forces of nature. It's impossible to find a weak spot. In this display, you can see that not even a spear that has been driven into their chest is strong enough to take them down. It doesn't matter what kind of physical trauma either. They can take it. Even something as simple as hanging upside down and being kicked in the chest doesn't phase them. What about wood? Nope. Try again. 
they're capable of withstanding blows way stronger than that. In this test, a sledgehammer smashes concrete on top of his chest. And if a literal hammer isn't strong enough to leave a mark, then I don't know what will. I mean, after being hit this many times in the abs, it's impossible not to think this guy's a real life superhero. Like, I don't know how they've managed, but these guys have somehow found a way to train their very own X-Men. Speaking of men, for most of us, if you get kicked in the crotch once, it's game over. And if we get kicked there again, we crumble into a million pieces. But that's not the case for them. Using some pretty unusual tactics, they figured out how to train their more sensitive body parts. I mean, I don't know how this guy's confident enough to just drive a steel cap log into his crotch, but props to him. I'm not gonna lie, this looks like straight torture. And I know some of you might be tempted, but please don't. In fact, don't try any of this stuff in this video. In order to reach this level of skill, one must learn how to be as nimble and agile as possible. And I know these guys are being trained to be as tough as possible, but some of these drills are just plain insane. I mean, I've used the Stairmaster before, but I've never seen anyone bear crawl downstairs like this. I know for sure that if I tried this, I'd fall down those stairs faster than John Wick. Yeah, I'm convinced that these guys are in the business of making workouts a hundred times harder. They're doing high kicks, flips, and they took a look at the human wheelbarrow exercise and were like, nah, that's not hard enough. Let's climb over some rocks instead. The same thing could be said about their ab workouts. Man, scooping water into buckets never looked so tiring. But it doesn't stop there. They even made somersaults more intricate. Please, somebody get this kid some ibuprofen. But your physical abilities will only get you so far in this kind of training. In order to make it all the way through, you're gonna need concentration. And that's not something that's easily held onto when you're constantly being bombarded with drill after drill after drill. Which means that these guys have to focus all of their energy on these rigorous exercises in order to pass them. They involve things like balancing on wooden logs or while doing the splits. But if that wasn't hard enough, how about we make you hold buckets of water while doing it? Or what if we put teacups on top of you and force you to stand still? Do you think you'd be strong enough to be able to keep them from falling on the ground? You have to sustain uh, your muscles over a long period of time. But one of the most impressive feats of balance is their final test. It's a skill called monkey going up the tree. It's one of the most difficult moves in all of Kung Fu. And the only way to pull it off is with near perfect balance. Flawless. But balance isn't the only skill they need to master. In fact, to pass this next exercise, they're gonna need their full arsenal of skills to be at their best. It's time for their final boss fight. This is a key moment for Shaolin masters in training. Most of them have worked years to get to this point, and now they have to lay it all on the line against their fellow man. Every kung fu technique they've learned can be used here. It's crazy. I mean, watching them do their thing is like watching a real-life version of Street Fighter. But just when he thought you had him cornered, he finds his inner Super Mario and jumps up with ease. Because their training allows him to overcome any obstacle. You know what? I feel like these guys should start calling walls stepping stones instead. That seems to be a more accurate term for them. And this guy, unlike most of us, doesn't need a rope to climb up this mountain. With all that training, he's able to just waltz up like it's a casual early morning stroll. And let me just say this, the next time I get something stuck in a tree, I think I know who to call. This next skill takes more than 10 years to perfect, and it involves a monk's precision, strength, and the ability to concentrate their energy into throwing a needle through a pane of glass. Whoa, whoa, oh, wow. Look at that. But breaking glass is easy, right? Well, normally, yes, but it's not easy when you're doing it with just a needle. The amount of force you need to send the needle through the glass and into the balloon on the other side is hard to quantify. Yeah. But let's just say that it's a lot, not to mention how good your accuracy has to be. I guess this is quite literally what it means to thread the needle. And this is what it means to work through rain or shine. If you thought these monks take snow days, think again. These guys push themselves by facing these exercises head on, no matter the weather condition. 
It just goes to show how fierce they are if they're willing to put their bodies through this. I mean, these exercises are grueling enough, but having to do it with snow on your back is something else. But tests like this will ensure that these guys are able to adapt to any situation. Let's just hope that they get to sit by a nice fire with some hot chocolate at the end of it. Speaking of adapting to any situation, these monks have to be able to contort into the most unusual positions. Can you do that? <laughs> Seriously, when you take a look at some of these things these guys can do, you're gonna wonder if their bones are made of rubber. I mean, how is this even possible? This old man is more flexible than I've ever been in my entire life. But I guess that's what happens when you spend your entire life mastering Kung Fu. I know that I'm never gonna make it to this level, but it does make me wanna sign up for a yoga class. This is a great way to stretch. Yeah. You see, you can do this with your partner at sure. home.